Hello, um, I look a bit like a cyborg, but that's because I'm doing a video on the Pulsar Challenger, which is a very good Gen 1 night vision unit. Now obviously I've got the cap closed because I'm using it indoors and I've got a light on, but I just thought you might want to see it, you know, how it is. So a uh, big thank you to Hype because he donated £50 towards this and also recommended it to me because he knows a lot about night vision, a lot more than me. So he obviously knows which units are good and which are bad, or, you know, units that may potentially be worth reviewing. Um, but what I'm going to have to say in this video is, I am going to, at the end, include some footage shot through the night vision. The issue is, even if you use proper, um, you know, like, camera or phone mounts to the night vision, I find it still doesn't look anywhere near as good on the end video result as what it does to your eye, and I assume it's just because the cameras don't pick up anywhere near as, you know, good a light spectrum as your eye does. So therefore, things you can see quite clearly while looking for the night vision, you know, end up looking too dark on the actual thing. So there's um, only three modes on this, but that's all you need. There is, I'll go to, to all of them, you do on the little swivel dial here that's really convenient and it stays in position. It isn't one that, you know, you have to hold a button down to keep on. There's off, which is quite obvious what that does. It's off, although it doesn't turn off straight away, it has to dim down. So bear that in mind, don't take the end cover off if you've just literally turned it off. Um, so there's off, there's on, um, which is pretty simple, it turns on and works, and there's on with the IR illuminator built in, and that is the bit just there. You can actually see that on the camcorder more than you can with the human eye, because camcorders pick up a little bit of IR. So this is it with the head mounting kit that was included with it, so I'll get this bit off. And the annoying thing of these head mounting kits is, although this one actually puts it really well onto my eye actually, to the point that, you know, it's actually quite decent to look through. The issue is that it never feels that secure to me and it's a bit bulky. So this is one that you basically adjust to get how you want it on your eye and then you, you know, just put it up using this quick swivel button and down. So that's pretty simple. And this is, you know, a head mountable, what they call skull crusher ones. And as you can see, you can adjust it a bit. But the thing I find with this is that you can never get it really comfortable. It's a good enough thing, it's better than a lot of night vision head mounts I've seen, but again, it's still, I think, a helmet mounted one, which, you know, you just flip up and down on, on a helmet would be better, because in general, helmets are designed to be a bit more comfortable to fit on your head. So, there's that. So, if I take the night vision off of the actual thing, here we go. So, this is the night vision unit itself. It's very lightweight and compact, very nice. So that's the actual bit there. What I'll do is flick it back on again because it's got the uh, thing with a little hole in it just so you can see what it looks like through the camcorder. There we go. And then there you can see it's green but you're not really going to see much there. You can see the door behind me. Um, very nice display on this. One of the really nice things of it is it's um, quite a high resolution display for a Gen 1 unit. So um, you can use it with either eye as well. If you want to turn the eye cup around you can or you can just fold it back. But you know yeah you can use it with either eye. No problem. Also, if you turn it around, it's always the right way up, which is nice. Some night vision devices obviously end up being sideways or upside down if you do that. So, it's got two sort of 20mm rails on the bottom, and also the ones that take those sort of camera screw type ones. So you could mount it on a tripod, you can mount it on the headgear, um, and you can mount different things on it, like laser IRs and things like that, which is nice. It takes one battery, which is a... Um, the one they put on here is a CR123, but what I've actually got in there, because they also work and it's a bit more practical because it's rechargeable, is one of these. So the number on the battery is a 16340, so that's a very small little battery, but it's ideal for this. Um, it's, I think I ended up buying those for a laser pen at one point, or it might have been an obscure camera I had, but luckily I had some with the recharger for them. So, it's got obviously rear eye focus there, which is this bit you swivel around, and it's got a front focus, although this isn't a zoomed in monocular, this is like a 1x one, which is quite nice if you're trying to navigate with it, because obviously the problem with zoomed in monoculars is it's quite, imagine if you were trying to walk with a telescope on your eye, even if it was perfect daylight, it's a bit annoying. So I'll show you the box, I won't get the manuals out because I've already put them away somewhere else so I don't lose them, but there's the little case it came with, um, you can fit obviously the night vision in there, you can attach it to your belt if you want to, or you can have it like a camera carry bag, it's pretty straightforward. And there's also the bigger one, this is what the head mounting kit came in, so there's that. Oh, there's also a lanyard that I might attach to it, which I haven't done yet, in the box, this is the box. 
So I think these normally retail in the 300 pound to 400 pound sort of, um, you know, region. This one was about 220 pounds, I think, if I remember right, because Hype found a seller on eBay with basically a brand new second hand one. Brand new second hand, but it was pretty much brand new when I opened it. The box was a bit scuffed, but everything inside was in perfect condition, completely unused. But obviously, the main thing of interest is the night vision unit. And I said, at the end of this bit of the video, there will be some footage of it. The problem is that, as said, um, you know, it's not going to look as good as it potentially could do because, um, you know, it's not going to look as good through the camera as it would with my eye. But it does look very good with my eye. I was actually able, this is the first night vision I've ever navigated properly with for sort of about one mile distance in the dark. The reason being the image intensification or sort of light amplification is good enough that you can manage that with this one. And it's comfortable enough, especially with this, because of the very, it's got a very good field of view as well. Mustn't forget to mention that. Um, so it's not like, you know, a little tunnel vision thing where you're looking kind of like that. You actually get a fairly good field of vision. I think it's still only like high 30 degrees, low 40 degrees, but that is still very good for like a Gen 1 night vision unit. So yeah, what I've put on now, which is quite a convenient way of doing it, is my old Soviet sort of Russian um, IR illuminator thing, which is a pulsing one. Um, so I don't know if that will even show up on the camera. But um, it's uh, apparently a very good strike, you know, uh, bright, strong one, and you can focus this one as well, which is nice, you can have, have a, like a torch all zoomed in, because the IR on the um, Pulsar, obviously, you can't adjust. One of the good attachments you might want to put with this, actually, is um, an IR flashlight mounted there, which is like a zoomable one, so you can adjust the range of the IR illumination. So when I use this at night, if you've got a bit of moonlight and starlight, you can basically definitely see anything. If you're in a shady bit under trees, you want the IR illuminator on. With the IR illuminator on, because it's mounted to the unit, you know it's not a thing that's in the way like it is with some night vision units, you can generally see very well. Um, it's basically just like having a flashlight on in front of you um, that's, you know, attached to the unit, but only you can see it. Other people might see a dull glow if they're looking just in the right direction, but you'll be the one actually seeing the IR light, so that's really good. But, um, so if I'm going to compare it to other night vision units I've used, and bear in mind I've not used any Gen 2 units, I've only used Gen 1 and Gen 1 Plus, I'd say this is probably all around better than the PNV57E, um, especially, you know, due to compactness of size and things like that. The PNV57E was slightly better in uh, light amplification. So if you're in two places um, and it was dark and you didn't have an IR illuminator on, the PN57E, the Soviet ones, saw better in that regard. Um, they could amplify light more, but they also were worse in the sense that if there was a bright light, that would wash out your vision a lot more. This doesn't seem to do that. I don't think it has auto-gating or anything like that, but what it does do is it seems that, and obviously you don't want to look at bright lights with night vision on because you can potentially damage the night vision, but what you will notice is it's not going to wash everything out as much, which is actually quite nice. You know, it's almost got a high-end um, sort of light, you know, ability where it probably knows not to amplify light that's already quite bright. So that's good in that regard. Um, but yeah, in terms of field of view, best night vision I've ever used. In terms of light amplification, second best after the PNV 57E. Um, and yeah, it's definitely the best one in terms of walking around with it on. I found even with this, just using it as a monocular was better than the PNV 57E's because it's kind of less fisheye to your vision, if that makes sense. Also, with the head mount on this, I could get it better up to my eye like that than the PNV 57s, even fully adjusting those. I found they stuck a bit further out in my eye for those, so I had to kind of hold them to my eye to get a good sort of field of view of them. But yeah, all in all, this is a very good unit. So as I said, what you're going to see now is some footage with it, but bear in mind, this footage looks nowhere near as good as it does if you're actually using the night vision, because unfortunately... Because these are old analog tech, you can't film through them in the sense of, you know, recording direct to a video file. Um, so you have to put a camera or a phone filming through them like that. So you get a bit of sort of wasted stuff around the edge. You can never get the camera totally flush with it. So you're always letting in a bit of light or a bit of darkness from this outside. And for whatever reason, they never look as good on the image quality than it does, you know, looking through with your eye like that. But it should give you a good idea of how good it is. But yeah. Big thanks to Hype again for recommending it and donating towards it. And as said, it's definitely very good in person if you use it. So I'm going to recommend it in that regard, you know. If you see the footage and think that looks a bit crap, it's just my phone trying to record through it. It doesn't look as good as it could do. But in terms of how well this actually works when you're using it, yeah, absolutely no problems. Excellent. So yeah, 
I will leave you with some footage, so watch that and see what you think. But as said, it's definitely better than the footage makes out. And I'll be doing a lot more videos of this, but it's just when I can find good ways of filming through it or things where you can see me operating in the dark with it. But again, the problem is trying to, you know, film that and then have a regular camera see it because it won't because it's too dark. But there we go. So enjoy the footage. Right, so this is how dark it looks at the moment. You can probably see the moon up there, that's about it. Let's get the night vision up, get the camera in place. With the eye cup on, it's not the easiest job in the world to get that focused on there, but there we go. As you can hopefully see, this is the IR illuminator on. Very easy to see, and with a separate IR torch, you can definitely get this going a bit further.